Believers, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready to change your life? Oh my God, I am so excited. I am so excited you are here. I want you to literally feel like you can accomplish anything. I want you to feel like you can reach for the stars that your entire everything, everything that you've ever wanted to do can come true. I want you to feel like you are the person that you've always wanted to be, that it's right now you are that person. Now is the time for you to reach your full potential. Can you feel it? I was listening to some Van Halen, some David Lee Roth. Panama! That's old school. That is old school. That's actually even before my time. I think I was very little when that came out. Welcome to Believe. Our website is believe.love. Send your friends there. Send your family there. We want to help you. We have so many awesome hosts. We're having some amazing guests on our show. We've just started booking guests again, and we have a lot of them contacting us. I'd say 20 in the past two days. We had billionaire investor Jim Rogers, one of the top investors in the world. We interviewed him. It was amazing. That was the other night. It'll be posted up soon. And it's really cool because it's not just your average interview that you might see. Jim talked about, um, you know, we mentioned... um, NASA discovering water on Mars that was possibly partially covered with water on Mars. Consciousness. We address so many things along with his thoughts on how we can be successful, make more money, the coming economic, uh, possibly the tough times ahead of us, what to do. So Jim was so cool. He answered a lot of questions, and this is an interview. You know, he's been on stage with Steve Forbes. He's been on CNN and every single news network you can imagine, New York Times, Washington's, Washington Post. We asked him about his relationship with George Soros. So we didn't shy away from any questions. And Jim was a, was a really great guy. And so it was, uh, it was my first interview with a billionaire. I had one time exchanged in my life emails with Mark Cuban. But uh, this was our first interview with somebody like Jim, and I think it's really going to help to propel our network uh, to another level because this is a positive news network. We want to help you to succeed and bring you the truth the best we can see it, just some possibilities that you might not find on other news networks. And, man, we want to rock your world. We want to just have this become a community Just another community, one of many, you know, our company name is Love, L-O-V-E, exclamation mark, and we want to help, just help you to do everything you ever imagined was possible in your life. You know, be able to travel, be able to free yourself, be able to be happy, happy with those tough, tough times, those times that you want to cry and just say, man, this is tough. You know who's had some tough times recently? are some really great guys. And I want to talk about this. David Wilcock, Pete Peterson, and Corey Good. These are uh, experiencers, researchers, insiders into what may be possibly going on in our world. Things that might not just be the sort of corporate news narrative. I have to say, I was in Puerto Rico in 2015. I was down in Puerto Rico And I didn't know what the law of one was. I never heard of the law of one. I didn't know what Gaia was. Gaia, of course, is a great uh, network, Gaia.com. It's uh, it's got a lot of shows, documentaries, thousands. It's it's really awesome. They They sponsor Conscious Life Expo in L.A. a lot of times. I've been there two years in a row, Conscious Life Expo. And I didn't know any of these people. And I'm in Puerto Rico. I had a tough time, a tough breakup or or something, you know, just feeling like hell, to be honest with you, feeling like hell. And uh, wasn't, you know, randomly saw on the computer, some synchronicities started happening. The clock started being 111. You know, I'd look at the clock randomly. It'd be 333. Then I I found the law of one on the computer. And then suddenly I, I find this network Gaia and I turn it on and 
put on this show by this guy with this guy David Wilcock. Never heard of him. Never. He starts talking about the law of one on the show. It wasn't in the description of the show. Just didn't even wasn't looking for the law of one. And uh, you know, Corey Good, this guy, I start hearing about him and. Um, just a lot of things have happened since then to bring me back to Miami and to, to bring this, uh, network to you, believe. And, um, so some tough things have been happening in, in that community, the community, I would say of the, uh, the people that are, I guess, open-minded, right? Because we have a lot of nonsense going on and, um, what gives me hope are the people that are open-minded. And these would be the people that are interested in talking about things that other people might think are crazy. And because you know what? There's a lot of things we're not taught. For example, why are you here? Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What's the real story? Think about how much um, our understanding of the world and the universe have changed just in a hundred years, didn't they say everything would be invented in 1900? Right? Everything. Can you imagine everything? Everything invented in 1900? You guys imagine that? I think it's. I think that sounds crazy when we look at it now. So there's a lot of things that we don't know, including me. But the you know, so people, people who are willing to talk about these things that we might think are crazy, uh, or um, the university system might think is crazy or not be, you know, they're not willing to talk about it. I love those people. I love all of them. I love all of you out there. Everybody who's willing to talk about things that uh, could be could be not found in, uh, you know, I went to the great University of Michigan, the Wolverines, right? I love the University of Michigan. Go Blue. Anybody out there, go Blue. I played football there for Lloyd Carr. It was a great experience, but you know what? I didn't. I didn't learn a lot of shit. I'm going to tell you the the truth on that. And it's maybe it's not their fault, right? It's just the whole the whole system. If you want to control a population, you just control education, control money. You know, you just and you know maybe maybe it's not about controlling it, but you you kind of just put certain things out there and you know define success from the top down, and then anybody who says anything different just tell them they're fucking crazy and. That pretty much will do it, right? That's pretty much uh, all you need to do to control a population for some reason. And that's that's coming to an end. I can tell you that. I really feel that. And it's not that it's wrong. It's just, it, it's just a progression. It's just a progression. People are doing the best they can. We, I guess I, I don't have kids. I have uh, friends that have kids or parents. And, uh, they, you know, they got to control certain things because the kids are kind of crazy sometimes, right? So <laughs> if they don't control the kids, they'll really go crazy. And so some of these things are, I guess, for our protection and things like that. And then some of them could be for other reasons. And, and if they are, and if those are sinister reasons, we forgive those people. Just like if we have bad parents, or you know, my parents are great. I'm not perfect. They're not perfect. Their parents weren't perfect. But I mean, you know what? They're great. There's good in everybody's heart, even the people that are controlling or working for some entity that you know wants to depopulate the world or whatever the hell's going on out there. And trust me, there's a lot going on out there. We're, that's, we, we get to the bottom of it here. We also forgive people. We want to invite them in. We want to harmonize the world. I certainly need forgiveness. And um, so David Wilcock and Corey Good are some pretty cool cats. I've seen them in person, David Wilcock, at least three times, Corey Good, twice. And uh, I've never seen Pete Peterson in person. But Pete Peterson is a source uh, that David Wilcock, I think he first started speaking to him back with Project Camelot, because I watched those early interviews, and that was, it seems like it was over 10 years ago. Um, of course, I saw it recently in the past year or two, but the interviews, it looks like, took place, I think, back in 04 or something. You can find them on YouTube. And David Wilcock is a really amazing researcher. I'm very thankful to him 
And I'm thankful to all these guys and, and all the guys that are pissed off at them. I'm thankful to them too. I love them as well. And I love Dr. Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, and I love all these people that are open-minded, right? So this community, I think it's just important to kind of see the big picture here, right? The bottom line is that uh, when we look at multiverses and we look at uh, Princeton Professor, let's pull that up here, the great... Let's see here. For our YouTube viewers, you know uh, Firefox defaults to Yahoo. Can you believe that? We're pulling this up. If it loads, if it loads, that's another. That's another. Uh... <laughs> let's go to Google. Here we go. All right, let's go back to that screen. Multiverse. Have astronomers found evidence of parallel universes? This is 2017. There was a, okay, here we go. Princeton theoretical physicist. And this goes back, there was a guy in the 50s. If you, uh, if you look into this, uh, multiverse is why the multiverse isn't just madness. My understanding is that everything could be true. Not just one thing, not just one reality, not even just one version of yourself or myself. What the hell is the other? I don't know what the other me is doing right now. I'm, I'm pretty funny as it is. I can't imagine what these other versions of me are doing right now. I, I send them love, though, and I send all your versions of you love out there watching. But the point is, like, I'm going to go through some things. I, I listened to Jimmy Church. Let's pull this up on Firefox. On, uh, on the web browser. We got David uh, Wilcox website, Divine Cosmos. Dark Alliance mega attack repelled for now. Um, August 14th, David Wilcox breaks sabotage. Was it the Dark Alliance? So I listened to Jimmy Church Radio. You can see it here, episode 707, uh, Fade to Black. I listened to this episode. I listened to the one with Corey Good. There's just a lot of nonsense going on. It turns out these guys... You know, they talk about UFOs, they talk about, but it's not just that simple. David Wilcock is a researcher, and when you take a listen, or when you read his book, or when you listen to David Wilcock, and when you listen to him talk, and when you re read his stuff, and when you listen to his shows, and you actually pay attention, because that's like a miracle, by the way. Any human being who pays attention and actually reads thoroughly Give yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a round, yeah, give yourself, no, I'm serious because that is rare. I mean, people, just for us to read, actually read what somebody's saying and actually read every line is like a miracle and actually comprehend. It's tough for us because we're, we're, our attention span is like a, like a gnat. We have the attention span of a gnat. So David Wilcock, his stuff is very detailed. Very detailed. So many citations. Um, is anybody 100% correct? I, I don't think any. He, you know, a lot of it is his ideas, but it's really backed up by a lot of research. Nobody can dispute that. There is a lot of research. Whether it's all 100% correct, I don't know that any researcher is 100% correct, but this guy is an amazing human being. And so David Wilcock was a researcher, and when you listen to the story of him and Corey Good over time, it really is a cool story. I mean, I've listened to every detail of it over the past couple years. I just enjoy it, and a lot of people enjoy it. And listening to the story, and Corey, Corey Good is an experiencer. I mean, he's, he's an amazing guy. Corey, you are. I'm very thankful for you as well. An amazing guy, you know. Went on some 20 and back programs with, uh, with some secret military programs where they, you know, gave him injections and uh, subjected him to a lot of stuff that none of us can really imagine unless it's happened to you. And um, where he'd go in the future 20 years and I guess work uh, in space and then go 
backwards in time, back into his, you know, previous state. And then he started to have memories come back of this experience and all these things. And then he's just got so much knowledge. And the thing is, like, when you listen to how he approached David and, and then when you study Corey, when you watch him over time, he's a very, he was a guy that was outed apparently on a forum. And uh, he was very, very tense and timid. And I understand. If you listen to my introduction to this show, I'm just putting it all out there now because I, I might as well. I'm doing this because I feel like this is my purpose. But when I started doing these shows, I mean, I try to have fun and you'll, I have all kinds of moods, but I'm just, it feels like I want to be, I want to set myself free and I, we need viewers, you know, so I'll be crazy. Again, I said, I'll get a cat. We'll have cat videos. We'll do whatever the hell we need to do. So people watch and we get this stuff out. We got great business leaders, great, what I would call new thought leaders we have health and wellness. We have, you know, world news, our universe, true success, money and business. So we have some important categories that we cover, and we want to, we want to harmonize what's really controlling the world. We want to love it, and we want to kind of bring that spiritual community and kind of, kind of reach out to who's actually running the show, who and and you know, actually try to get some solutions tangibly. And we're going to try to have an event either this year, and hopefully uh, it'll grow, where we have government officials and heads of religions and invite them in and invite, uh, you know, really actually try to get things done. We have a free energy project that I've actually hired engineers in Venezuela or one who's now hiring more. That's actually happening. We have it up on our YouTube YouTube.com forward slash believe loves you. So Corey, Corey's an experiencer and he was, what I mean is he was very timid at first. He was very, uh, it, you can't fake that. I mean, not all the time. I mean, you, you watch him and uh, he doesn't look comfortable at all. And what I mean is that that's a good thing for credibility. And then you can watch him change over time. If you just watch episodes of Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia, you just simply pay attention to the guy. And uh, there's just a lot of nuances that you can pick up where you just don't feel like the guy's full of shit. If I can just be blunt about it. You just don't feel like he's full of shit. You know, um, there's not a lot of benefit for him to, uh, it's not a field that pays a lot. Um, there's not a lot of benefit to come out. And I guess some people are talking about money and all this. That's bullshit, man. Anybody needs to make money. Anybody. I mean, give me a fucking break. Everybody, you know, I mean, you got people, you got people making the budget of CNN that has 400,000 viewers is billions of dollars from corporations, it's a big game where they, they, they run brand advertisements and they spend a ton of money on a network that has almost no viewers. I mean, give me a fucking break. And I mean, the guy should make money. Everybody wants, everybody right now has to make money. Now, the guys, both of them, David Wilcox, the researcher, Corey Good reached out, but not really. It's like he had to pull teeth. Yeah, could Corey have theoretically had some kind of plan that, he, like, some kind of cat game? You know, how cats like walk away and they look back at you and pretend they're not interested. I don't know, but I've listened to every nuance of it. And the the most recent episode, it was very telling because David. Now has come back from a life break. He's a great researcher of, I would say, possible truth that is not discussed by mainstream media, right? Things that should be discussed, in my opinion, at universities, and David Wilcock will talk about it. He's one of many guys, many people, but he's a popular guy, and um, he's one of my favorites. I love David Wilcock, and so... 
he came out on Jimmy, Shir Jimmy Church's Fade to Black show, and he said that um, some, some stories I hadn't heard, that uh, Corey Good, there was once uh, David Wilcock, and he hasn't talked about this a lot, but there was some telepathic message he sent to these beings, maybe the blue avians or whatever, you know, some beings, and it was some kind of code question and a code answer. And he said something to the effect telepathically, I guess basically sending it out there to the universe. Hey, if this is real, can you guys uh, tell Corey the, the question and the answer? And then Corey apparently just called back or called David and just randomly said this question and answer. And you just listen to David's voice inflection and his, his attitude. He's so he's irritated because of all this bullshit, which I definitely understand. I mean, he's just talking. People are just talking about their experiences. I, I, I have experiences as well. I, I wouldn't expect anybody to believe me because I couldn't even see. I mean, to me, I'm 100% sure of my experience. But, um, yeah, if somebody couldn't see it, I wouldn't expect them to believe it, but I would say that maybe it's possible for them. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we all have experiences, and I don't think it's a bad thing to talk about them. And I also don't think it's a bad thing to... Um, I've never heard, for example, Corey Good sit there and say, hey, you, you have to believe what I'm saying. You have to believe in the blue avians. You have to believe that I did all this stuff, and if you don't, you're stupid. I hear him getting a little bit pissed off because he's having to deal with so much nonsense, I guess, of people telling him, uh, you know, he's a Satanist or whatever, uh, you know, people are coming up with. But um, I don't think it has to be that black and white. The guy had a lot of experiences that, you know... A pretty credible person, whether David is 100% correct about everything. I've never met anybody that's 100% correct about everything. In fact, if you research the Mandela effect, well, just look up the Ber Berenstein Bears. To me, it's the Bernstein Bears. That's what I remember. Well, it's not. It's the Ber Bernstein Bears. Berenstein. I don't remember that. I remember the Bernstein Bears. When I was like five... That's what I remember, the Bernstein Bears, right? So what is the truth, anyway? It could be with multiverses and everything else. There's going to be a lot going on. Now, some people, of course, they just lie. They make stuff up. But um, Corey gets a little bit irritated. That's, that's true because I think he's got, there's a lot of people giving him crap. But I've never heard him say, you have to believe what I say or you're wrong. Never heard him say that. He's just telling what happened to him, and really the message is try to be more service to others, um, try to help people, I think, and uh, we could be more compassionate, and basically, like, the truth, like, that I could do that, we all could do that, and these beings told him this doesn't sound like a bad message to me. I don't know. What's the problem? I mean, people just, we love to complain. I've complained a lot. If you're a complainer and you think Corey Good's full of shit, I understand, man. I complain about everything. Almost everything, if people watch some past episodes of our show, um, almost everything that I thought was, like a lot of things I thought were strange, kundalini yoga, ayahuasca, Qigong, all of those things I thought were crazy at first. I thought, like, this is, I'm not going to do this. Like, what is this? I, and uh, in fact, all, uh, at least in a couple of those things, I didn't research them. I felt some things, but I thought, I don't, I don't this isn't, like, this is strange, and what, what are these people doing? And I had some kind of adverse reaction. Like, I pushed it away. In a way, or, or I just thought, ah, you know, that's great, but it's not for me. And there's just a lot of things like that I could name in my life. And then it ends up being something that's really, really valuable to me. 
that actually changed my life. And uh, so it's something to keep in mind. It doesn't mean Corey Good is uh, perfect or, or anything else, but I, I don't hear him saying that he, he's, I don't see, hear him saying he is perfect. So David Wilcock, why is this important to anybody listening? Because we're probably not being given the truth in almost every category at our universities where people are spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And these guys present some pretty interesting alternatives to what could be going on. And uh, they're separate guys, but you know, Corey Good goes on the show uh, on Gaia with David Wilcock a lot, so they're associated. And um, it's just an interesting story. And David has researched other things and has other sources like Pete Peterson, who also strikes me like a man who is not full of shit. Um, I don't know him, Pete Peter. I don't know any of these guys personally. I've, I've shaken, I've shook hands with Corey Good and I think David Wilcock, and um, Pete Peterson. I have not. I'd love to have them all on the show. You know, we would love to kind of bring all this more mainstream if we could, because it needs to be. And so that's why I'm I'm doing this story. But um, Pete Peterson is a guy that when you listen to him, the the way he delivers, because I, I pay attention to a lot of you know energies and you know, I read I without trying to, I can read situations. I don't know everything about uh, Pete Peterson or Corey Good or David Wilcock, but you get an idea. Everybody tries to get a feeling for somebody. And Pete Peterson, the way he's so, like, no nonsense, and he doesn't really care if you believe him. You can tell. I mean, he just rattles things off, like, and he's not really, he's definitely not doing it for the money. And there's really no benefit to him. I think he lives in a bunker somewhere in Colorado in the mountains or something. And He's not worried about if you believe him. Uh, he doesn't have a show or anything else. I mean, it's like David Wilcox had to get him to talk. But he's a really, really, really smart guy. And this seems no like absolutely no benefit for him to make anything up, right? So now what's happening is, all, and he's a source. He's like a, Pete Peterson's like a government insider. So you got David Wilcox. One of the best researchers, I would say, we have. Graham Hancock is really good. David Wilcock, David Icke. Uh, there's a lot of them. Linda Moulton Howe. I mean, there's so many. There's there's so many of, of things you might not hear about on the news or at, at a university that you, you probably should. All those guys on Ancient Aliens are awesome. And Corey Good and David Wilcock were on that. And then you got, yeah, just people are pissed off at them. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I think that we're defeating, it's defeating the purpose of being open-minded. I mean, I mean, it's like, like some mainstream scientists would just say, well, the crazy people are fighting themselves, right? Like within themselves, like somebody could call all those people crazy or me too for bringing it up. And I, I could care less because I am 100% sure we, we were not given all of the information, and I think that's part of the reason I'm here as well, to hopefully help to open up some possibilities. Not that I know everything, but I definitely know there's a lot more than what we are presented with for whatever reason. I don't think it's all because there's the government is all evil, but there could be a lot going on. That's for damn sure. And there is a lot going on that we are not <laughs> told about. And we want to. We want to invite those people in. We want to forgive. We want to harmonize the world and, and invite it in and shine a light on anything that we could think is darkness, which, by the way, could be a blessing because the more resistance there is, the more growth there is. So we have David Wilcock, the researcher. Corey Good is an experiencer. He had beings come to him. He's been all over the uh, galaxy, uh, the solar system at least, and to the inner Earth. And you know what? They're finding stuff in Antarctica right now. 
What's going on there? Um, NASA said Mars had water on it suddenly. I mean, there's a lot of shit coming out. It's like, yeah, you know, there's something going on. So if Corey Good's bringing attention to it, that's great. That's great, in my opinion. Who knows what happened? You tell your friend a story, you know what happened. I mean, you can't, you can't convince. He, he's just saying what happened to him, you know? So, um, and then Pete Peterson, like a government insider, like, you know, and, a, and an older guy, not too, I mean, he's, he's very, very smart and sharp, but older than the other two guys. And this guy knows a hell of a lot too. You just listen to him. And uh, he probably has sources. Maybe those sources aren't 100% correct. Who knows? But um, definitely somebody that is has some sort of knowledge about things that are not usually discussed. And definitely not a guy that seems like he's into a lot of bullshit. So, so what's been happening? So these guys have been getting, I guess, harassed pretty hardcore. And I think it needs to come to an end, to be honest with you. Uh, let's take a look at um, David's post, the Dark Alliance mega attack repelled for now. And by the way, sometimes this shit happens in life, but sometimes there's a lot of shit happening at once, and yeah, maybe there's something to it. You know, So David, uh, we're, we're scrolling down. And basically, a CIA guy or somebody apparently from the CIA is trying to tell him to, uh, you know, because David, I don't think he's not making a lot of money. He's saying he could become the next Alex Jones if he drops Corey Good and basically threatening him and, you know, trying to extort him. And then you've got um, his brakes were cut or something happened to his brakes. And he almost died. And then you've got um, Corey Good gets a call from Child Protective Services about some kind of him possibly running a cult, which is completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And then Pete Peterson is uh, all his possessions are put into some kind of to dumpsters, are put into some dumpsters, and they're going to steal them from David Wilco, or steal them from Pete or something. I, to me, it's theft. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about this. Some kind of legal battles. Maybe it's not stealing, but they were supposed to put them in storage, but then they just started throwing them away, I guess, the, the, the police, apparently. I don't know what happened. I don't know anything. All I know is what I'm reading here. And I tend to believe David after watching him for years. I just, and seeing him in person and feeling the energy, and there's just nothing about, has he, is anybody accurate on everything? No, I'm certainly not. So, but generally speaking, this guy has really, I am very thankful. He's opened up, you know, a lot of stuff he presented changed my life just because it leads me to other things, you know, and you find your own truth, even from what I'm saying. And so, um, yeah, Pete's an elderly man, and uh, there's, there's a lot of nonsense going on. And then, you know, you're listening to uh, Jimmy Church, and I guess, I don't know, I don't follow it that much, but apparently the UFO community or, or people that I would call some of the most, I guess it would be the most open-minded people we have because it's like people that are willing to talk about what reality is probably and it's like the, the the people that are supposedly mainstream and smart can't admit it like when uh when the one guy bruno was it he got burned at the stake because he said we're not the center of the universe or something like that or galileo or whatever i mean it's like they start attacking david attacking Corey apparently and bitching and Corey has some friend that has a tattoo and calling him a Satanist, which is ridiculous. Give me a fucking break, dude. <laughs> a tattoo? Really? Come on. I mean, we got big problems. We have big problems in this world. 
And my point is I love all of you. I love the people that are attacking them because you know what? You can't beat them with hate, right? So um, I just think it probably, if you're open-minded, maybe be open-minded. I understand. You know, the problem is there's so many lies. There's like layers of lies in the world. Lies upon lies upon lies. I said, yeah, like this company, I'm the owner. Like if you don't know what the board of directors is doing for CNN, you don't know the agenda of CNN. Like you, it doesn't matter what the head of the network or whatever, like it's, and then actually like whoever's influencing the board of directors, then you know what's really going on with CNN. Like, you know, who's what the true agenda is. So here we have to make a lot of money because I want this to be a big news network that is actually hires a lot of people and we have a great presence and then I can meditate more and be more peaceful as well, more and more and more and more, right? And uh, and then, yeah, I've le- I've, I'm not perfect. I need, I'm doing this because I wanna be better. And that's it. That's essentially what I've heard Corey Good talk about, but he's talked about his you know, the blue avians and things, and people can't see them for themselves, but there's a lot of things that happen that are real that people can't see. Dogs can't see color. Does that mean it's not real? But, you know, then humans can, so because everybody can, well, I don't know, a colorblind person can't, right? So maybe to a degree, a lot of us are colorblind and some aren't. Some people are able to do and see things that others can't. Doesn't mean it's not real. But people lie. That's the problem. There's so many lies, layers and layers of lies, and then like partial truths and and all this other. Sh- it's hard. It's hard, man. But the great thing about the UFO community, or I, I would say the people willing to talk about reality, and, and the reality is there's a lot more going on than us, and most of what's real is not visible. Most. <laughs> The visible spectrum is very big and we see a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what is real and that's just one, that's the visible spectrum we know about. So the reality is we don't know shit. And, um, but people lie a lot. So it's, it's a very tough situation. So these guys are great, and the people that are attacking them, I think they're great too. It's just, you know, I don't know if they're CIA people funding them. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know if maybe maybe they found out Corey Good I, I, is telling a lie, but if it's just some guy with a tattoo, and I think we need to pray, f- give good energy, send good energy to both, both sides, all sides. And if you're somebody that's open-minded, Maybe we should be open-minded, right? Maybe we should be open-minded because um, that's your forte, is to be open-minded. And uh, there is something to needing proof. That's true because there's a lot of bullshit constantly. There is a lot of bullshit. But I think, you know, um, you got to look at what somebody's really doing. I mean, somebody's making a comic book. What are the odds that's going to make? Has anybody ever, like 10% of businesses succeed? You know how hard it is to make money? I mean, I it is very hard to have a business venture that makes money. It's very hard. It's, it's, yeah, Corey has a little bit of an audience so that, that love him, and that's a big, that's a good start. But it's hard to make a lot of money. I've made a lot of money twice, and I've also lost a lot. Um, and it is hard. It ta- I mean, I'm kind of smart, and it took me years, you know, um, to find things to ma- generate a lot of money and a lot of failure, a lot of failure because I wasn't paying attention to detail. So somebody makes a comic book like, in a way, it's like, dude, good luck, because it's hard to make a lot of money with that. I mean, so that's that's just, that's crazy. He should make a lot of money. Everybody should make a lot of money. You, you know what? We're, we're working on free energy because uh, money is bullshit, actually. And um, 
you know, there is a quote, which I heard Corey say once, that any planet with a monetary system is a slave planet. And if you have free energy and more advanced 3D printers, which we probably have both, if you listen to Dr. Greer and, and countless thousands of other people, then actually money is irrelevant. We could use it to trade and that's it. So um, everybody should be rich. And so I am spending money at a loss. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we're going to try to develop free energy and make it open source and then sell some little thingies if they do find out how to put it together. I'm hiring people in Venezuela. They don't have anything. They're going crazy down there with a, it's a tough situation. And we'll see what happens with that. Trying to actually put my money where, you know, into something that could matter. Um, but uh, there's nothing sinister about Corey or David. It just, it's just ridiculous. Even if they're completely wrong, who gives a shit? They're bringing awareness to what could be true, and they're helping other people that have their own experiences that can't be verified either necessarily. Uh, I don't know that there's one that's accepted, that's verified contact with extraterrestrials ongoing that anybody has had, right? So it's, it's not, but it's not anybody's fault, man. I have arguments with people. I get irritated all the time. We just have to forgive each other and stop if we can. I need help. I, I want to, I want to, harmonize things so we can see the best in things and then bitch less if we can. I, I, I bitch so much. Let me tell you something. I bitch so much. That's what brought me to do. That's what brought me to any of these realizations, being unsatisfied with people and the world and why, you know, people are lying all the time and people don't do what they say. They, 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 they keep money. They do weird shit. And then I get angry and then I, I say, you know, mean things and, you know, what's that all about? And, you know, the work of Dr. Patrick Flanagan, the Russian pyramid research has actually changed my life. Ayahuasca, Qigong, Kundalini yoga. There's a lot of things and none of them I heard about at the University of Michigan, but I still think there's even good at our university systems as well. There's good. Of course, it's good. There's some good there. There's good in everybody's heart, even the criminals, the people that have stolen and murdered and the, the worst of the worst. And, and what I was told in Peru by something that I couldn't see, whether it was my higher self or something, is that the good is what live, lives on. That's what's real. And everything else is just kind of fades away. It's nothing. It's not, it's not real. The good is what lives on in everything, and that's what's real, and that's what I was told. And, uh, you know, so maybe everybody's right in a way, right? Because there's good in everybody's heart, and uh, people work hard for years. They want, to, um, they want to protect the truth. They want things verified, verified, verified. But maybe sometimes it's, it's not necessarily about that, especially in a field where not a lot is verified, and that's why it's quote-unquote in the fringe. But to me, it is verified. I, I've had things that are true, you know, energy and work with things that, you know, Qigong and energy medicine or Reiki, and, and there's a lot going on that has been very real to me that we can talk about on the show sometime. So let's give these guys a break. They're doing a lot. They are trying their best. And also, let's give the people a break that are attacking them. I, I, I love you too, man. You know, like, they, they're trying to, for whatever reason, they think it's the best thing to do as well. It is what it is. But let's just try to harmonize, especially when we're, when we're supposed to be open-minded. So what we have is we have, you know, people fighting people over kind of the same thing. Isn't that happening in the world all over the place already? You know, aren't we kind of just, and I, I, I did an episode the other day, just pick up a mirror and yell at it. You might as well. It's like we, we should just yell at ourselves. It's much easier. 
you know? Um, eventually, maybe people that go to prison will, um, will help them instead of uh, pointing a finger and telling them how terrible they are. Because, But then again, if somebody committed a crime, a major crime against me or my family, of course, initially, I'm mean, like, that person needs to go to prison. Like, screw them. But ultimately, you want to forgive, I think, right? If we can. I have to forgive the doctors that could have cured my brain.